Tether spinal cord is a condition when the spinal cord is held most often abnormally low within the spinal canal. There are a classic symptoms that go along with that. There typically is findings of bowel and bladder dysfunction, possibly frequent urinary tract infections, most often constipation. Depending on what's causing the tethering of the spinal cord, there could be issues with deformities of the legs and feet. There may be club feet, there may be atrophy of one leg or the other, there may be difficulties with walking. Occasionally, if the kids are older, they may complain of things like pain in the back and or in the legs, sometimes funny sensations in the legs and feet, and that's typically with activity. So we have some kids that we know are gonna have a spinal cord tethering. And those are kids that from birth, they have an open spinal cord defect that's called spina bifida, and that would be called spina bifida operta. That means open spinal cord defect. The spina bifida patients, uh, we've closed the defects that they have shortly after birth. And because of the abnormal tissue that's there, they all scar down their spinal cords. Now, they don't all necessarily need to have detethering of their spinal cord because they don't all get symptomatic from the tethering of the spinal cord. And so that would be the same symptoms we talked about before. There's another one that we may see either in infancy or later on, and it's called spina bifida occulta, or hidden spinal cord defect. And it probably would be more appropriate to say an occult tethered cord, so one that's hidden, doesn't have the obvious reasons. Those kids may have findings as simple as an abnormal fatty collection, fatty lump in the lower back. They may have a dimple that's above the gluteal fold. They may have a hemangioma or some sort of birthmark that looks more pink and reddish in that area. Sometimes there's a tuft of hair like a fawn's tail. You know, it's kind of often to have a little bit furry kids that are that are, that are when they're born, and that's not the issue. This is actually long hair that's in the area. Sometimes there's findings that look like the kid, for all the world, may have had like a cigarette burn on the back. There's actually a loss of tissue there, and that's a specific kind of associating factor. You could have a skin tag, a finger-like projection of skin that comes out from the back. The more concerning one would be a congenital dermal sinus. And a congenital dermal sinus is an abnormal connection that goes from the skin all the way down into the spinal cord. And that's the reason why it's a problem. And it's a problem because there's the potential for infected material to get in from the outside dirty world to the inside sterile world. There are some other things that you wouldn't think really would be associated with tethering of the spinal cord and that is an abnormal butt crack. One of the things that I tell families is that at birth it's one of the few times in your life when you're supposed to have a perfect butt. After that, all bets are off. But if you have a child that has a fork gluteal fold that persists, or if you have one that doesn't go straight up and it hooks off to one side, that's also something else that's potentially associated with a hidden or occult tethering of the spinal cord. The general rule is, is that if there's one skin finding, some abnormality that you see there, there's a 6% chance of having a tethered cord underneath there. If you have two skin findings, it's a 60% chance that it's tethered underneath there. There really aren't any other treatment options other than surgical detethering. We actually do what's called a laminectomy, which is the removal of the back of the bone, but we also put it back afterwards, which is called a laminoplasty. Depending on what the child's age is, it depends on how we can put it back. On really young kids under a year of age, we can actually just sew it back together with stitches. Kids that get a little bit older, we use little tiny plates and screws. Those are the kinds of things that we would end up doing on opening and closing the spine. Pediatric neurosurgery is specialized in taking care of children in this problem. Adult neurosurgeons don't take care of this problem and they will defer to pediatric neurosurgeons for this. This is something that we do a lot and we feel comfortable with. One of the best things here is, is that we have more than one pediatric neurosurgeon, so we have full coverage 24-7. Whenever a child comes in, there's always a pediatric neurosurgeon around that can take care of the child.